metrics in the HPTI um, because I initially met you when you were doing a whole bunch of work with the HPTI. Um, I know you're very experienced using a lot of different psychometrics, you've been using it in the talent space, um, and I think your insight is going to be really useful to people just because you've got so much practical applied knowledge of how psychometrics and psychology is really used in the workplace. You're a business psychologist mm -hmm. um, and you have a lot of experience in that space. So I wanted to talk to you about using psychometrics in the business space um, and I wanted to start out with any kind of general practical advice just for even approaching people because some people are scared of psychology, some people mm -hmm. are scared of being tested. Yeah. Um, so let's say even from the start of a testing or development process, how would you introduce psychometrics or testing to people if you're using them in a business? Sure and, and thanks for having me by the way Ian. Yeah. So um, I think setting up the conversation in terms of you know, describing the tool you're going to give feedback on, focusing on personality, I think it's very important to set it up in the context of, hey, this is for a management programme, this is for a leadership programme, this is part of our initial coaching relationship, what, what is the basis of them having completed that? Um, because as much as you might have mentioned that in the email that they received with the link or through their line managers or various comms, it's very good to reinforce that and I think it's very important although you might have a lot of traits and, and discussions you want to cover within that time with them um, to take time to understand what their role is what their experience of psychometrics has been that's key um, because often it may not have been positive because great tools in the wrong hands can, can have a very different impact often we just jump straight into like this is the tool and our standard things in the manual around norm groups and kind of you know um, its validity etc and all that good housekeeping yeah. uh, practice we're taught in our level A and, and B and, and sort of various accreditations but I think take a step back from that first and, and really get to know them and I think often when you understand what they want to get out of the conversation you'll have many opportunities to link it to what's in the report. Yeah, um, that's such a good point about not just using a kind of top-down approach to say this is what we're doing and this is why you have to participate, mm. is understanding who's taking part, what they can get out of it, what value you can add to them and their career and their work. So again, how would you go about doing that, especially if someone's a bit resistant, mm -hmm. if someone doesn't necessarily want to take the test or because I'm sure you've worked with those yes, people. Yes. <laughs> how, how do you introduce it and how would you explain their results in the test to them? Well, I think I'd, I'd thank them for, for completing it. I'd, yeah. I'd try and understand where that resistance com is coming from. So I'd say, you know, what experience have you had in uh, completing psychometrics before? Mm -hmm. You know, understand whether that was for recruitment, for development, whether that was in the same company that they're within because yeah. um, that might have been linked to, to you know the function you're in or, yeah. or whether it's sort of previous um, work experience that they've had and just understand why that was not a good experience for them mm -hmm. um, and then I think just usually I say well you know thanks for completing it thanks for sharing your experience um, the purpose of, of me feeding this personality tool back to you um, i.e. the HPTI is to to help you understand where your um, key tra traits play out and how that impacts your role as a leader or, or someone that's soon to be a senior leader mm -hmm. depending on the context um, but it's not a tool to define you as, as a human being we're all complex and you know as great as any of these um, measurements are they're not going to give that light and shade of what makes us all so fascinating but it's a way in to have to start to have that conversation yeah. um, and that I'm going to feed back what I'm what I've interpreted from the output but it's it's point. far you know it's, it's it's well within your gift to disagree with that and I think um you know in my experience I find that sometimes there will be certain questions that might be influenced by the kind of shoulds and oughts that we all have in our mind and again if they think that it's going to be used as part of a performance um you know measure or something or, or to kind of prove that they're worthy to be on that development initiative in the first place they might be answering some questions with their managers voice in the area potentially yeah. and then some are more just naturally this is the way I prefer to operate so okay. sometimes if you get that disconnect um, that's where you can have if you if, if you've signposted that up front to say that sometimes this influences the way people answer then I think they feel more comfortable to say yeah actually for example with conscientiousness some of that I think just by our own culture and and the way we're expected to be in the workplace if you are more spontaneous and easygoing, you might mask that in work more because yeah. people tend to read into that that you're, um, you know, disorganised or you know that you're not as 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 um, planful and, and it's seen in a negative light rather than all the benefits of that 
side of the scale has just because I think that's something we're just conditioned from education right through to work is that you need to to have a list and you need to know what you're doing and, and not have that more flexible approach and some companies really reinforce that through their own culture so sometimes you have people that mark that high and then they say well if you ask my partner yeah. I'm you know running around on Christmas Eve packing as the taxi's coming for the airport yeah. <laughs> but I really try and manage that at work but when I'm under great stress I might find it really hard to keep that up because just I just don't have the energy to maintain that and that's where the whole this is not saying you can or you can't, it's what do you prefer. Where I say with ability, it's, it's obviously a very different. It's, well, you can't, this is your school for diagrammatical reasoning. It's, it's a lot less yeah. um, <laughs> easy to talk through learned behavior versus sort of your natural preference. And that's a good point too about personality versus behaviors too, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people experience this with kind of stress and stress levels in the workplace, mm -hmm. right? People with really high adjustment tend to be really resilient to stress. People with lower adjustment tend to be more stressed, more worried, more concerned, and just more generally emotionally reactive to stuff. Mm -hmm. But just because you do get stressed about things doesn't mean that you have to be or that you can't manage it. Yeah, exactly. Right? So like people who tend to be very stressed often can learn all sorts of different coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Some are healthy, some are unhealthy. Yeah. Um, and so it's ways of developing that behavior. And that's always a really interesting conversation to have mm -hmm. um, in kind of the debriefing or when you're talking about people's results is how do you work with these levels of personality mm. traits and how do you manage them? So how do you get at that kind of information when you're doing a debrief, right? Because if you really want to get to that information about how people work, why they're working, when they're working well or not, mm. um, sometimes it's hard to get people to open up in an yes. interview, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of strategies do you have to get people to, be, to disclose more information? So usually when I introduce that um, trait, I would say someone on this side of the scale would tend to um, view X, Y, Z as, you know, say for example, if we're talking about stressors as, um, say, an acquisition, um, something like, okay, well, let's see what happens. They don't mind the uncertainty, they thrive off it, um, and they tend to see it as a challenge and tend to have a bigger circle of control in their mind versus things being done to them, whereas someone on this side may feel like less in control, more worried about the worst case scenario and, and, and that, they, that may show up in different ways whether they internalise it and then maybe it has a physiological reaction or that they almost, without realising, project it onto other people. So I'd mm -hmm. give examples like that on things like adjustment and, um, and, and, and think about how does that play out for them. So kind of ask them the question of like where would you see yourself because yeah. um, sometimes people often will say it and they say, oh, it's interesting you say that because you are a moderate on that, so you can flex either way yeah. um, and ask them how that plays out in their role because I think, especially with managers and leaders, like I think they think they have to be that tough front all of the time yeah. um, because they're judged in a different way, but actually if they are more, um, if they are lower in adjustment, I help them see you can probably relate to your team when they're stressed and they're worried about maybe the same thing um, because you know, you, you, you understand it more because you're probably feeling similar emotions, whereas if you're very, very high in adjustment, you could come across as aloof, even if that's not how you're intending to, and they almost feel like, oh, they never seem to worry about anything, so do I feel comfortable to tell them I'm worried about everything? So it's how, it's how it shows up, um, and it's quite different when you're an individual contributor because you're not judged in the same way. Yeah. But also, it's if, if you're external facing as well, that's got a whole other implication of how that show up if you're in a pitch or a crucial client meeting and some people they're very good at masking it in those scenarios but then maybe because they feel more comfortable with their own team when they come back they they probably just take the mask off a little bit and offload about how they really think it went so it's, it's all about the more you understand about their context up front you can link it to, to okay so internally how, how does this look externally how does it look um, and then they usually draw their own examples from that whereas if you ask more generic questions and they're more reserved they might not bring it back to their day-to-day -day as much yeah and it's funny too to see sometimes how much people do open up in those interviews mm. because um i mean sometimes people aren't even asked that many questions about yeah. that work their work or they aren't given that many opportunities so if you're you are a good listener um if you're asking those questions sometimes even the people you wouldn't expect to do mm. open up a lot